Hello and welcome to the Helioscope PDX YouTube channel where we share our comics knowledge with you through interviews and tutorials. I'm Leila Del Duca and this is part 2 of my inking comics traditionally video. Last time I went over basic inking guidelines and I started inking this double page spread from my series Shutter. In this video I'm going to finish inking the spread and narrate some pointers I have along the way. I'm starting to ink one of the close-up panels where Kate is struggling to open a bottle of wine. I am smashing the brush into my paper to get excess ink off and to split the bristles apart in order to get the texture I want on her knit sweater. Next I move to Kate's face. I usually start with noses when I'm inking faces because it's a good midpoint feature to use to assess the rest of the face. Next up are Kate's lips, which she's biting out of frustration. I found this expression really fun because it was fun to figure out how to get the lips to bunch up as she's biting on that lower lip of hers. Next up is Kate's eyes, uh, which are probably my favorite thing to ink. Eyes are super fun. And with Kate, I give her heavy eyeliner and some shine on her bottom and top eyelids. I also give her thick eyelashes and eyebrows. Again, I'm not being too precious with the line steadiness like I mentioned in the first video but zoomed out, they look pretty fine. So when you're inking your own work, don't worry if it looks a little bit sloppy up close because chances are when it's zoomed out, it's gonna look perfect. I like to add some lines on the nose and cheeks to imply fluster or just to add some interesting texture. It's something I stole from one of my favorite comic book artists, Sean Murphy. All right, so now with the hair, I start to get a little bit more painterly, definitely less um, precise than I was with the face. I really like when inking feels more like painting than anything else. So that's probably why doing hair is so fun to me. Skipping ahead since the rest of that page is pretty straightforward with techniques I described in my first video. Here I'm filling in some of the blacks in the gutters with the ink in my tray that got thick after some of it evaporated. With this first side almost all done, I'm moving on to the other side of the double page spread. I start with the panel where Kate is fleeing the party with a bottle of wine. As you can see, I'm inking the rat lady behind her with thinner line weights than I used on Kate. This helps establish atmospheric perspective. Moving on to the top panel, I'm inking this crab person that is in the foreground of the party scene. I like adding characters in the foreground not only because it looks cool, but because it saves me a lot of time. Larger figures take up more space in the foreground, therefore it means I have to draw less details in the midground and background of the party scene. All right, moving on in this page, I just keep inking as I have been. All of the creative decisions that I've already told you in these videos, I keep making over and over. Raspo means toad in Italian, and this is a storytelling element that comes back into the comic to make more sense um, in a later issue of this series. As usual, I save my least favorite part for the end, which is the cityscape in the background. I also have to ink this fire escape. I could have chosen to use a straight edge and make these lines cleaner, but I really truly don't like using rulers because they slow me down. More buildings in the background, and I'm being sketchy here, trying to imply them more than being super detailed about them. Again, it's my style. I'm not trying to impress anyone with my backgrounds here, but um, I really think it's so cool when people do put the effort into the backgrounds and you look at it and there's like so many more details and they're less sketchy. Thank you. 
Now that I've inked the fire escape, I can ink the character behind it. She's leaning on a wall, breathing out with relief. Finally having escaped the party. And I'm done! Here is the finished double page spread. The last thing I want to share is this very useful book that helped me out when I was first learning how to ink. It's called The Art of Comic Book Inking by Gary Martin. I found this book useful because after it teaches you how to ink, it has examples from various artists inking the same page so that you can see how different artists go about the same thing. I suggest buying a newer edition that has even more examples of different styles and techniques. And there's even an edition that has tear out pages of blue line artwork that you can ink on top of for practice. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Layla Del Duca and I will see you next time.